You really want to do what ultimately makes you happy as a teenager and it's understood, which is why you would love this phrase, follow your heart, because it aligns with what you really want because you want to be happy. And the truth is when it comes to decision making in life, your happiness is a good thing, but then your happiness cannot be the true basis to make good and wise decisions. In today's video, I want to do a continuation of the series Teen Struggles, and I'm talking about decision making as a teen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, and welcome if it is your first time. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, do so now, and let's get right into today's video. Following your heart, or the aspect of believing that if your heart desires something, you should do it because it will make you happy. When it comes to making good and wise decisions in life, you will be led astray why the heart of man in general is deceitful and the truth is that you can't really tell the state of your heart that it can lead you right to make good and wise decisions everything that has to do with your heart has to do with what you know and what you understand which means you are limited by your understanding the scriptures in jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? This tells you that the heart of man generally is desperately wicked. It is deceitful, which means no one, not even the owner of the heart, as I am right now, I can't really tell my heart because naturally it has the tendency to do evil. And the only thing that differentiates a man from another person is having discipline and self-control so that some things that you think you don't act out on those things you think because for example the easiest way to portray this is when somebody offends you the first response is that a thought comes to your mind either to revenge or an evil thought of what you would do to the person which if you really dissect it 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 really would hurt the person it will cause harm and then it's an evil kind of thought so you see, that is just a tip of the iceberg of how deceitful your heart is and how wicked it can be. And scripture says, who knows it? Who knows how bad it is? Now, following your heart can lead you astray. And what does your world tell you in your experience about following your heart? If you are cool with it, just do it. If you feel comfortable about it, just do it. If you feel peaceful about it, just do it. All those things are not the good parameters or the perfect parameters in making decisions in your life. And all I'm saying here is that your heart is not the best parameter for you to follow in making decisions in life. You would definitely be cool about the things you truly desire because once you desire a thing, you really want to get it. And your heart has a way of, you know, yearning after things and longing after things and then it wires it to your thoughts and to your actions. So once it's in your mind, it can really lead you to follow that track. And the scripture says that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but it leads to death. And I love it in this translation. You can rationalize it all you want and justify the path of error you have chosen. But you find out in the end that you took the road to destruction so this is for your information as a teen the bible and god himself did not tell you follow your heart but god tells you follow me god did not say you should follow your heart because instead of following your heart god said guard your heart the only instruction god gives you on what to do with your heart is to guard it not to follow it the scripture lets you know that your heart is deceitful so it needs to be guarded so that you'll be careful of what comes out of it, of what thoughts you entertain, of what you allow in, of what stays in your mind as a mindset, of what belief you get to accept. And in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, it says it all. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. The next thing I want to talk about in decision making as a teen is the fact that you are prone to make foolish decisions. Why is this a possibility? Because there are so many things yearning for your attention to make to help you decide. There are so many things that are affecting the choice and your decision making, from your peer pressure 
to your identity confusion if you are confused about your identity it's going to affect your choices if you are seeking validation it's going to affect your choices because you try to people please just to fit in and be accepted in the particular clique you want to go into when you go to rome we behave like the romans when you go to this place so now you have to change your behavior over time and which will lead to making decisions that are not based on truth and good parameters but based on how you feel based on what you really want which is still a symptom of following your heart because your heart seeks validation you are making decisions to be validated you're making decisions for approval you're making decisions for affirmation from people you feel like you don't need anybody to guide you you know what you're doing that is actually pride it is a real thing because in this age you are in transition and that is why i say in this point is that you are prone to make foolish decisions and choices and that is not me talking down on you no get this i'm not talking down on you i'm just making a statement of fact that there is that probability that if you don't get to know how to make wise decisions you are going to make foolish decisions as a teen i am prone to make foolish choices so what should i do scripture tells you in proverbs chapter 1 verse 10 my child if sinners entice you turn your back on them now there are so many people who are going to come to you presenting attractive things to you things that tries to buy you because the bible uses the word entice your heart is going to pump after these things because somehow you really want what they are selling and since you want it it's going to be enticing to you everybody's going to club everybody's sleeping around everybody's doing this everybody's doing that so it feels like am i the one that is left out how can i fit in so that i will not be left out that is why you need to adhere to that scripture when sinners entice you when people bring things to you do not consent turn your back on them say no and as a teen i know that it's a, it's very real that you are struggling to say no you don't know how to say no you don't want people to be disappointed you don't want people to feel bad you don't want people to look at you a certain way you don't want people to push you away from the clique you don't want your friends to reject you you don't want to feel that weight so you want to be accepted that is why you are a kind of a yes yes person oh are, are you coming to, with us today let's go out let's let's go to that club yes 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 sir. after you said yes you didn't want to really go but you've already said yes so you've given him your word and you want to keep to your word you want to be a man or a girl or boy of your word now you see you've made an irrational decision study from experts shows that the brain development of teens is different from that of adults that a teen till they get to the age of 25 the decision making center of their brain is still in development that is why we see a lot of teens or even adults regard teens like they are irrational and all the impulsive behaviors and what causes this impulsive behavior because that thinking decision making faculty of their brain is still developing but the part that is fully grown is the amygdala which is the emotional center and whenever a teen is making a decision that they are making decisions from their amygdala that is what is informing their decisions their feelings their emotions teens have heightened emotions and that is the reason for the impulsive behaviors that is the reason for them being prone to making wrong decisions because the logical part of their brain is not fully developed for them to think about the risks of each choice and then the benefit of the choice and know if the risk outweighs the benefit i should not do it but instead what the team leans on is the aspect of the reward center which is if this is going to be good for me i'm going for it if this is going to bring me money i don't care the consequences i'm going to do it if this is going to bring me some good things some good feelings i'm going for it so now having sex is going to bring you know heighten your dopamine masturbation and pornography and all of this they are only focused on the short term satisfaction because it is about the immediate gratification and that is why i am telling you right here you are prone to making mistakes which is the reason you should seek counsel 
The Bible says that in a multitude of counselors, you are preserved. You cannot be led astray in a multitude of counselors. And I know that teens have this ability in them to be secretive to people that they can live completely different identities in different places. And all I'm telling you is try to seek counsel, talk to people, learn how to open up because you are prone to making mistakes, getting wise counsel from people, from adults, from your parents and learning how to talk. If your parents are not their um, presence for you, you can look for adults who are well-meaning and they have character and integrity, open up to them. Of course, I know you are looking for people who will not judge you. So you can find those people and talk to them and get to find help so that you will be helped in your decision making. When you hear advice from people, consider it. It doesn't mean you should take it and swallow it, but consider it and try to check and ask other people, is this good advice? So do not come to a place that you feel like you do not need guidance for anything because you know what you are doing that would be destructive for you now the next thing i want to talk about is the risk taking behaviors the truth is that once you in your experience are presented with decisions to make sometimes you are confused you don't really know what to choose that is why even in the area of education and academics you don't really know what to choose if your friends wants to be engineers it's very easy for you to choose engineering they affect your choice Whatever line your friends wants to go into, most times you want to line up there because even when your parents tell you, go for this course, you don't really know because you don't have a lot of data. And based on the fact that your prefrontal cortex, which is the decision-making center of your brain, is still developing, you will be a little bit irrational in making choices. And this is what leads teens to taking risks and having risky behaviors experimenting with substances with drugs experimenting with alcohol you know trying to sleep around and you know i want to know how it feels you just feel like if you miss this time you've missed it forever if you miss sleeping with people now you've missed it forever you never have that kind of experience like it's a feeling that if i don't do it now i may never have the chance to do it so this is my best chance this is the only time i have and you are let me get gratified people celebrate bad things People celebrate vices and then they look at virtues with contempt. A girl that is a virgin would be looked at with contempt. Oh, you're trying to be religious. Oh, holier than thou, Sister Mary, and all of that. But then the one that is like sleeping around, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like, why are we celebrating wrong things? Why are we celebrating vices? But this is the time we are living in. And that should not make you as a child of God, to join in these risky behaviors. Instead of joining them, turn your back on them. Because these risky behaviors is only leading to destruction. And it can lead you to undermine your future and the years ahead of you and make fatal decisions that are going to affect you. And I don't want you to get to that such a place. That's why I'm making today's video. Decision making is hard as a teen. So seeking counsel should be one of the things you don't joke with. A lot of the things that are making mistakes today by joining gangs and joining groups of people who are doing wrong, it is because the reward is what they are looking at, the emotional reward, where they, they will do things that you know they are doing with their, with their friends and the dopamine kicks in and then they feel like they are being rewarded. For example, when a teen hears that money is involved in what they want to do, they will not even look twice. They will jump at that opportunity because money is one of the things that excites the reward center of the brain of a teen, which is the amygdala. Once you hear money is involved, immediately you can jump at that opportunity, not weighing that opportunity. If this money is just a bait to trap you, there is a good part to being a teen. Because teens are, re are more interested in getting into competition. That is why you even live a competitive life. That is why it's so easy for you to want to compete with your friends. In, in academics, you want to compete. In other places, in other things, you want to compete. Because it's about the emotional side of your brain, which is fully developed. That's where your decision making comes from. And all you are doing is trying to get that gratification, that satisfaction for yourself, to feel yourself. 
and which is the most reason that the competitions that is introduced in our world is mostly for teens as a teen you have the tendency to jump at opportunities and you know take some risks that is why sometimes you even take the wrong risks but there are calculated risks that you can take which is like good competitions the voice competitions and some other good competitions that can bring you good you can jump on at those opportunities and go with them and try to make something of yourself you have a good voice and there's a competition go for it there are good things that are legit go for it engage in it because you have that energy you have that drive do not sit back make those good decisions and using this energy that you have because it's an emotional passion and energy that adults do not have proverbs 3 verse 7 to 8 says don't be impressed with your own wisdom instead fear the lord and turn away from evil then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones the next thing i want to talk about is the aspect of learning from experience now i know there are things that have been said about experience is the best teacher but over time people have said experience is not actually the best teacher but evaluated experience is the best teacher which i believe with that based on what i want to share now the truth is you don't necessarily have to experience something to learn from that thing sometimes you can evaluate other people's experience you can listen to people's advice and guidance to where they had it wrong and learn not to get it wrong you don't necessarily need to you know let me experience it for myself i might go see for myself you don't need to go see for yourself you don't need to go have sex for yourself and get pregnant and then as a, a young teen teenage girl and then have your life to struggle with as a single mother you don't need to go try some things try drugs and then you lose your mind i know you may have a lot of arguments around some of these things because they say smokers are liable to die young and there are some smokers who actually live for like 90 years and they, they have been smoking all their life the truth is the cost of it you cannot even tell because sometimes i know we we judge consequences of actions by the physical you know things that we see maybe the person will fall down and die or will die early some people end up living but they live with health issues that necessarily they wouldn't have had to go through that they would have have held, they would have had some healthy living and enjoy their lives with energy in their body the truth is every vice that you get into has its consequence that affects your body your mind to traumatize you and every other thing so that's why you can learn from people's experiences you want to talk about sex why did god say don't have sex as a young person it's not even about the pregnancy it's not even about getting pregnant it's not about the gonorrhea or std it's about the effect of it on your mind because god knows that sex is good but it's good in the context of how god created it god created it for marriage he did not create it for you to abuse it malaria medicine is good for malaria paracetamol is good for headache the headache medicine is good for headache and it has prescription on how to take it you can abuse it by taking it out of context so now when you take sex out of its context which is marriage it's an abuse of sex the bible calls it sexual immorality it's an immoral way of involving yourself in this act and what does it do to you apart from these outer consequences that it that has been you know shouted at the mountaintop it's actually deeper than you see in the physical because it can monopolize you it has the the effect of actually making you tap an identity from someone which i will go in details with this in future videos but the example i would give you is that god said and they both shall become one flesh which means it is a joining of two people together you are tapping identity from people the exchange of the fluid is not even as deep as the exchange of what is happening on the soul the mental images and all and at the end of the day as a young person involving yourself in sleeping around will get you confused about your life because at this point you don't even know your purpose you don't even have focus in life you are so distracted you could be addicted to this sexual stuff you could be addicted to pornography and masturbation and you have to learn through other people's experience 
check marriages that are not working and see the lives of when the man was a young man sleeping around and be like when i marry i'm going to change and they are now married they are still sleeping around disgracing themselves and they don't even know the effect of it in their brain in their head and the trauma that is bringing to them and the harmful effect is having on their marriage and in their future even on their kids so now i know i've gone too far to talk about these things but then coming back to what i'm saying you can learn from evaluating people's experiences without having to wait to go and do things to have experience of your own. So learn by evaluating people's experience and then living a better life. Even the experiences you are having, learn from your experience. When you make a, a mistake, you've already made the mistake, the mistake is made. Don't try to go around to do other things as if to cover up that mistake or to correct it or to change it because that doesn't happen in life. You cannot correct a mistake. Instead of that, admit that you made a mistake and learn from that mistake. Learn from experience. Evaluate your experience. The experience of heartbreak, the experience of um, betrayal, whatsoever experience you've had in your little time of living. Learn from it instead of trying to correct the mistake. There's nothing like correcting a mistake. Now, I hope this video is beneficial. Let me read this last portion. For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He grants a treasure of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is right, just, and fair. And you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you understanding will keep you safe paul said something to timothy let no man despise your youth let no man look down on you because you have engaged in behaviors that are not that you are not supposed to engage in instead he told him be an example of believers in the world in love in honesty in integrity he mentioned a lot of things and in purity what am i telling you in this decision making be an example live an exemplary life live a model life that other people can look at you and be like can't you behave like that boy can't you behave like that girl can you not learn something from that girl you can be that girl you can be that boy that people will be looking at you you are an example that people can point to that we know that youth make a lot of rash and irrational impulsive decisions but you see this girl she is wise you see this boy she he is wise i hope that this video is a blessing to you let me know how it benefits you in the comments and if you have questions don't fail to drop those questions i'll be delighted to chat with you i am over my plan it is my delight to have you watch today's video and again don't forget to subscribe to this channel and see you in my next youtube video Bye bye